ready? Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we're recording this session for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. Our first section will focus on data strategies as they relate to missions and the open data policy. Next, we will discuss data infrastructure planning, application development against unlike types of data, and lastly, we'll explore plans for new technologies getting into not only SQL and big data. Feel free to post questions and comments during the session, and we'll provide an answer to you very quickly. We're particularly pleased to welcome our moderator, Tom Temin, the host and managing editor of Federal Drive on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. Let me turn over the reins to Tom to begin today's discussion. Welcome and thanks for listening. Our guests today are Cliff Douse. He's the Chief of the Information Architecture Division for the Army CIO Office. Taha Kas Hoot, he's Chief Health Informatics Officer at the Food and Drug Administration. We also have Kenneth Bible, he's the Chief Technology Officer at the Marine Corps. And Kevin Shelley, he's Vice President for Public Sector at Mark Logic. And uh, today we're going to talk about data, data policy, data how it's used in service of missions, and some of the database technology, and also the infrastructure and operations and maintenance that underlie all of that. But I think a good place to start would be what is your agency's overall data strategy uh, as it supports mission? And maybe give us a sense of the scope of the data that you encompass, because you'll have very different missions and different approaches. So why don't we start with the Army, Cliff Dows. Great. Thank you very much for having me, Tom. Uh, the Army's data strategy is directly linked with the DoD data strategy, as well as some emerging activities with the Joint Information Environment and intelligence community. There's four levels of what, how I talk about for the strategy. The first one is in overall guidance. One of the first things that the Secretary of the Army uh, signed as a directive is that data needs to be treated as a strategic asset. That means that there's no one that owns the data. It has to be strategic because of the sharing. And there's cost benefits associated with that because obviously in times of limited resources, you need to be able to, to share and reuse data. Second area is another level of strategy. I mentioned the duty data strategy. Those strategies are directly aligned with the principles that we have within the Army, or we're aligned with the DoD because we're part of the, that community. In the area of policy, we've codified our data strategy in Army regulations and also guidance to the community. Uh, I'll talk later on about the Army Data Board and the Army Chief Data Officer because there's policies associated with that. And also in the implementation. The implementation for the data strategy takes many forms. It includes architectural guidance, which are rules-based architectures that we provide to the community. It also includes the Army Data Management Program. And really where the rubber meets the road is in the programs or records and how they manage and how they implement data best practices. So with respect to how to utilize the data, because the Army is a, a, a very big IT organization, we promote uh, reuse of the data, so it can be utilized both in a tactical environment and also in an in a installation or a generating force environment. All right. And uh, Taha at FDA, totally different worldview yes. of data and also lots of legacy data, too. FDA, data, the way we look at data as a tool to help us achieve our mission of uh, protecting the public and, and the safety uh, for food uh, uh, supplies as well as drugs and other products. Um, also data for us is, is has multi, we have multiple streams of information coming at the FDA. Uh, some are highly unstructured, some are semi-structured, some are highly structured. Um, on the structure side, primarily from the industry, for example, when they submit um, the reactions uh, to uh, products, that's uh, have been worked over uh, the last decade where there's more of a format to how you can do this. You're and almost like the SEC in that exactly, respect. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. But then on the other spectrum is, you know, dealing with, for example, buzz on social media out there. Um, or you have an inspector in the field and there's new uh, a disease outbreak to investigate. Uh, there's swaps that's been taken to um, of uh, bacteria and whatnot where you have to run genome sequencing when you come back to the lab. Um, all the way to where you can have a mix of both. Uh, for example, when you're inspecting a shipment that comes to, to the port, and you have very structured also information that you need to look at, uh, you need to look at with other agencies that we're dealing with 
um, um, uh, regulatory or enforcement agencies that we're dealing with, um, uh, and how the exchange happen in a much lighter uh, weight. So, so this is sort of the scope that we're dealing with now. Uh, we do have uh, quite a bit of legacy um, infrastructure as far as, as the databases we deal with, primarily our relational databases. However, um, since my role was established at FDA was moved into the big data era, and how we can also look at unstructured more in uh, transaction um, uh, in, uh, in nature and, and notion. Um, someone out there, for example, can submit a video of, of a rash uh, to FDA, and how can you deal with that? That's still data, even though it's not columns and rows. So our strategy really is to look at data as a tool to help us achieve that mission and be able to adjust the bar depends on the data and depends on the need for that particular uh, episode. Okay, and uh, Kenneth Bible of the Marine Corps uh, may be similar to the Army. I wouldn't say, I, I would temper that with maybe, I promise. But uh, tell us what's going on there with respect to data. Right, well, from a high level guidance perspective, we fall in the same line as the Army with respect to following the lead of the DOD uh, uh, guidance that's coming out. But I will note that there are some unique aspects. You know, the, the Marine Corps has been fighting uh, alongside the, the Army and the other services in a protracted ground campaign for over a decade. Uh, we're now coming out of that conflict and getting back to our maritime and amphibious roots as a America's middleweight force and as a crisis response force, which has some very unique characteristics to it that, that we're getting back to our roots. Uh, it, it forms a different environment that forces us to look at how do we maintain the enterprise view of our data but support that disaggregated small unit of action out on the tactical edge. Uh, and, and how do you conceive of a strategy that supports that? I would say that our, uh, within the Marine Corps, the data strategy is actually uh, encompassed by several different pieces of our overall strategy, the, the most prominent being our private cloud computing environment strategy. Uh, and then, as was mentioned by the Army, with our programs of record, uh, codified in a net-centric uh, Marine Corps order uh, to expose the data, make it reusable, uh, and, and to guide that effort uh, by those programs of record to uh, uh, building a more accessible environment and, and making that data exposed to the enterprise. All right, and Kevin, there's a few themes emerging here, and uh, I wonder if you could give us a view of what you see looking across the whole panoply of uh, federal agencies. Sure, Tom. Um, certainly, First off, thanks for the invitation to be here with my esteemed colleagues. Um, as far as data today in the government, um, there's a couple things. One, in my opinion, government's always had big data, right? I think Taha hit on a, a point that, that I see a lot of folks struggling with, and that is how do I yield insight and harvest information from the unstructured variety of data? It's interesting, today the unstructured data represents 80% of the world's data, and typically we've been focused on the 20%, and one of the reasons we focus on that 20% is that it's structured and it fits very nicely into rows and columns, which is the relational technology. So I, th I think there's a fundamental shift in technology and the way people are thinking to, to solve a lot of the business problems. And whether your, your mission is to get closer to your constituents, um, find out uh, more about adverse events at, at FDA, or protecting the homeland, there's that 80% of the unstructured data that we can yield information from. And when we combine it with the 20% the of the structured, then I think we get more evidence-based type of um, decisions to be made as opposed to just focusing on the 20% and you're leaving a lot of the information on the table. Sure, and I guess it's fair to say that people have known for a number of decades about how much of the data is unstructured, but it seems the difference today is now there might be means of actually making use of it in a mission-related environment and in an automated way. You could get 10,000 videos of rashes in, but what can you do with that unless there's an automated way to handle it? So uh, why don't we start with you, Taha, on this next question about uh, what's your strategy? Do you have any ideas for getting all those pictures, people send in faxes even, and emails and texts, as well as videos, this 
drug didn't work or this happened when I swallowed that type of thing coming into the FDA. Uh, what are you thinking about as ways to inculcate that or blend it with the uh, structured data you get? And that's really great. Those are really all great examples, by the way. And uh, one of the things also, you know, data to us also with the uh, paper, paper is we have a lot of PDF data trapped in PDF files and paper faxed or uh, mailed uh, and Word documents. Yeah. And Word documents. So, so we, we're looking at all that as part of the, the unstructured uh, data. So uh, one thing we started also on um, last year, which is in a, uh, cloud enablement for the agency in a way that we can, um, the main driver there, uh, the privacy and security of the information, uh, protecting the trade secret, and is there a need for sharing that information? So, and that goes, uh, there's a wide variety there. It could be in the public um, uh, eye, for example, as we launched uh, OpenFDA this, this week uh, for public consumption or for private. This is where the private cloud uh, comes in. Or there's this hybrid uh, notion where we can, it, 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 the data can be uh, exchanged between uh, the outside world and FDA in a secure uh, manner. Now, um, the p part of the cloud strategy is uh, the tail isn't long if you don't fill it with options. So we're starting with the infrastructure as a service, then uh, put in platform as a service, and then enable software as a service. Uh, and then um, this is where innovation uh, can come in. Um, where a problem, for example, parsing a video, there are many, many solutions out there we can enable by plug and play, so to speak, and then try to work on our context. Uh, similar with the platform as a service now, um, there's uh, going to be more and more option where they offer GovCloud sort of solution mm -hmm. from the public offers of cloud, uh, f of cloud vendors where we can start uh, uh, look at the sensitivity of the information and is this offer can meet uh, our mission. And also the, the, a lot of the work that happens and innovation happens inside FDA having to have been dealing with genome sequencing and and paper submissions or manual submissions and all wide variety is uh, uh, folks at FDA have developed uh, means and ways that now with cloud infrastructure can actually scale to meet the, the need. So so if we want to look at the cross the three V's, the volume, the velocity and and um, and uh, uh, and the rest is is be able to uh, scale the uh, scale the infrastructure to meet those demands, and be able to find the right solution for that problem rather than a solution trying to find the problem. And and Kenneth, you said the Marine Corps, of course, is transitioning back from the mission that it's been on for all these years in Afghanistan, back to the traditional role. But I imagine there are lots of elements of data that would constitute lessons learned. Uh, in those 10 years of deployment. Any, any way of looking at that in a data standpoint and trying to bring that in to help the Marines over the next 10 years? Well, I, I think so. I don't have a specific example that I would call out for you, but certainly uh, recognizing, I think, and it isn't necessarily a, a data-related thing, but it was very profound in terms of recognizing a challenge that we face. Over that 10 years, we, we created um, this massive infrastructure that we carried on our backs, right? You fall into a forward operating base, you basically had tent cities with a data center in the back of it. I can't, that's not expeditionary. If I can't eat it, shoot it, uh, it's probably not going with me in an expeditionary context. Uh, that, that would be the mindset you had to be in. So it really forced you to think about data that you need for your mission and to to position that data in your enterprise so that it can be available when you need it. Just that amount, and you got to have it available for you when you deploy off of a ship or when you deploy out of a special purpose MAGTAF. Sure. Uh, MAGTAF being a Marine Air Ground Task Force, the, the integrated combined, combined arms uh, construct that we organize within the Marine Corps. Uh, so, so yeah, there were some lessons learned about uh, how big the problem was in getting back to that expeditionary uh, con uh, context. Uh, how do you pare down what you carry with you? Uh, for example, when I was out uh, early on coming into this job, I went out to uh, uh, 29 Palms for what's referred to as the XFOB, or the Expeditionary Forward Operating Base, which is a, an effort out of the Marine Corps to look at uh, uh, expeditionary energy, water, and waste handling, and to get back into that expedition mindset. Um, what struck me was how uh, much of the fuel that we were trucking into forward operating bases was used to go fuel generators to keep tents cool or to power servers. Uh, and so we really had to change 
the mindset of what we were going to carry with us and slim that down and figure out uh, how do we reduce that load? Because if I'm going off of a ship into some objective, I can't carry 55-gallon bar barrels of fuel with me. Uh, so it really got to that point of the, uh, the discussion about data strategy. What do I need to have? How do I stage it so that it's available? And how do I take just what I need and make sure it's there when the operator leaves and I can carry it on my back? All right, we're going to get into that a little bit more, too. Fascinating look at this. And Cliff, the Army, uh, what's your strategy for that unstructured mass, the 80 percent, and making it useful in an automated way? Uh, well, I'd like to piggyback on what Ken mentioned, because we've, there's also lots of lessons learned from the Army as far as the, the, the tail end. There's this explosion of mobile devices that's, that's across both the private and the public sector. And one of the things that we're finding is that, you know, commanders and soldiers, they want to utilize these mobile devices. So how do you get access to that data? You know, is there notions of marketplaces, frameworks? It's really about being able to separate the data from the application so that regardless where it's located, if you have a specific application that you want to get to, to for utilize for your functional for a soldier or for whether he's in garrison or in 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 the in in in, in, in area of operation he has direct access to it so you have to take a look at that and essentially make sure that the the, the data is accessible it's visible it's understandable and can be can be identified and so kevin before we go to break uh, briefly then that seems to be a major trend maybe brought on accelerated by mobility and that is the separation of data from applications that use it Right. So um, Ken brought it up, the, the, the point that all data is not created equal, right? Some is more important. Uh, I believe the example he used was you've got a, a soldier downrange in theater. He or she can only take what they need, and that applies to the data as well. If you look at big data and you don't have a, a strategy, it becomes cost prohibitive. So data has different values and your your most frequently used data sure. or the data that you need in real time certainly let's put that on higher cost high performance storage and on the other end of the stack where you've got maybe compliance data that you need to store and archive for say seven years right let's put together some type of an approach that is suitable and it meets your economic requirements as well so I think there needs to be a, mm -hmm. a data storage strategy to accomplish the mission within the right cost. All right, we're going to take a short break. Our guests today are Kevin Shelley. He's Vice President for Public Sector at Mark Logic, Kenneth Bible, Chief Technology Officer at the Marine Corps, Taha Kas Hoot, he's Chief Health Informatics Officer at the Food and Drug Administration, and Cliff Douse, Chief, of, Chief of the Information Architecture Division for the Army CIO. I'm Tom Temin, your moderator. And this is the new generation of database panel discussion sponsored by MarkLogic on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. <laughs> 